Hi folks, um, <clears throat> it's Ben at Church Universal and Triumphant, and I'm on to provide additional information about the teachings, which <coughs> I do periodically. And for those of you just joining us, I believe that I have found that a lot of my videos contain reintroductions. Um, I preface uh, the information with which I am familiar with material more relevant to people who are new to this particular spiritual path. Um, Church Universal and Triumphant is an offshoot of the Summit Lighthouse, which was founded in 1958 by a man named Mark Prophet um, in Washington, D.C. And Mark Prophet was and is part of a lineage of um, spiritual masters who have lived on the planet and have subsequently made their ascensions. Um, and this is a lineage that goes back to Madame Blavatsky in Russia in the 19th century. Uh, basically the mystic who first encountered uh, an entity known as Kutumi. Today we call him Kuthumi, but back in the day he was known as, we spell it out as one word, back during Madame Blavatsky's time it was spelled Kutumi and Almoria, who um, appeared to her eventually along with other masters, um, Himalayan masters. Subsequent to that, individuals such as Nicholas Rorick, uh, Helena Rorick, Guy and Ballard and so forth took on the mantle of the messengership for this particular church, which is based in theosophy to an extent, but is also informed by Gnosticism and um, a, a path known as I am, the I am activity, and also known as AM as an acronym meaning Ascended Masters. And there have been a variety of churches that claim authority over the years, as I stated, going back to Russia in the 19th century. Um, so that's what this is all about. But when Mark Prophet took on the mantle, you know, people, thought, people followed him quite diligently because he was so inspiring and charismatic. And then Elizabeth Clare Prophet, of course, we know from the news, um, uh, ended up encouraging people to move to Montana to reside there um, in basically what I suppose is tantamount to communal life um, and to continue trying to inspire light bearers while residing together in a somewhat remote part of the United States. Um, and she really revolutionized the church. And the church to me is really based upon her legacy and, and messengership. Um, and it also incorporates, not everybody knows this initially, and I think that when, it, when, when someone says that they're in a church um, that is a bit apart from mainline Christianity or mainline religious and spiritual paths, it even resembles um, certain paths like, to an extent, like Wicca and um, other earth-based religions, although it's incredibly Christian additionally. Um, I think that people are, are put off initially because they don't really understand how to enter it. So what I like to do is present um, to the to people who want a better foothold um, is that we also study the mystical paths of eight major world religions. So mystical Buddhism, as an instance, is entirely welcome here and, and pursued, actively pursued as part of the Dharma. Um, and Hindu, we consider ourselves to be part Hindu and part Jewish, also Sufi as well. Um, which is a form of mystical Islam. Um, so, in other videos, I have explained that, you know, the chakras, there are eight chakras in the body, and that each of those chakras correspond to one of these mystical paths. And there are also planets associated with each of the chakras. Um, and that information provides, um, I think, uh, workable clay um, for individuals to develop thought forms that are transformative. The church really is about self-transformation, about pursuing, using tools such as the power of the spoken word, which is located at the first chakra, the blue ray, um, to change your life, help humanity, improve the situation for your neighbor, uh, all of those valid, valid pursuits. So that's where we're at. So what I do is get online and try to um, call additional information. Because I'm experienced, I can vet it through my masters and rather my gurus, Mark and Elizabeth. I wanted to say an interesting thing about Mark. Um, you know, I wasn't around, I'm too young to have been around for Mark 
Mark Prophet, but people are alive today who still remember his work and legacy. Elizabeth Clare Prophet um, succeeded her husband in the 70s as the head of the church, and as, as I've stated elsewhere, I've seen videos of her presenting herself to the board at wherever it was. Camp, I'm trying to think of where it would have been at that point in the 70s. Washington or Camelot, I imagine, in, in California or Pasadena. I'm not exactly sure, but where she made a very clear presentation that she knew that she was the vicar of Christ. So she knew that she absolutely had to attend to the needs of the people in, in the church. I agree with that uh, conclusion entirely. Um, uh, and um, don't have a problem at all backing her up in, in that, with that assertion. So what I want to do, what I do is gotta, I get online and take a look to see um, um, who, not who, I take a look to I take a look for evolving information, but the trap that people fall into, and, I want, uh, and, and people who are longstanding communicants already understand this principle. But I want to, I want to speak out. I want, I want to, I want to articulate clearly certain principles because I think that it's time. I think it's time for the chiefs who are coming in who don't know and who lack information and who are eager and capable of carrying their part of the mantle. I want those people to feel welcome and accepted, and, and some of that requires unlocking certain truths. I feel with detailed information, stated truths, um, patent reality, things that you can calculate, information that you can calculate and track. One of, one, of, one of the traps people fall into, I think, when they decide that they are spiritual, whether it is on left-handed path, right-handed path, um, whether you are Christian, claim that you're Christian or not, um, people who were formerly in other religions or still maintain ties to those religions, I think that one of the traps is to say that the it's not the word, it's not the living word. If you want to benefit from this church and the people in the church, I think who are experienced as communicants who are evolved, the top hundred people, however you want to refer to them, I, I think that we have a couple of things in common. One is that the I, I feel, at least for me, and I won't speak for other people, but I will state my truth, is that for me, Elizabeth Clare Prophet um, was a living saint. And I know people in the church who um, adhered to the church when she was still an embodiment, um, who believed that she was guru slash living saint. They said, when I saw her interviewed on uh, Ted Koppel, she said, I'm not, <laughs> my followers do not consider to be the mother of the universe. I'm not, they don't call me a mother of the universe. Well, that might be true. But she's more like mother of the cosmos, in a way. So it's splitting hairs a little bit, um, because we do believe that she, I would say, contained, you know, resided within the Dharmakaya, the cosmic all, all of that. I do believe that. I've never suffered from a belief that Elizabeth Clare Prophet was a living saint. And a lot of, you know, there's controversy because people think you're following a cult, you're um, just adhering to one person. It's not about personality. It really is about the entirety of the church coming together to support uh, Saint Germain in whatever form he's manifesting. So study those principles, and I will certainly walk you through those principles, but for people who are new to the church, to, to proceed with an open mind and an open heart, additionally, is absolutely the best way to enter as well. I think everybody, even if you're suspicious about any claim to uh, cosmic sovereignty <laughs> um, that one might present here, um, to, to understand that the thought forms that will arise from certain components of belief practice will assist you tremendously and help your personal transformation in a way that is not at all um, subordinate to the guru, but is rather self-fulfilling and self-directed in a way that is supported by the guru because to an extent you are the guru you become the guru and you share a life path with the guru and that is part of um, understanding the enfoldment is to understand that um, part of the practice so that's where we're at um, so what I do is I get on and I try to dig up sutras and what I call treasure teachings also known as term texts parts of parts of our Bible the Aquarian Bible um, that are uh, 
obviously um, gems, obviously pearls of wisdom, and to incorporate them when I can. But what I don't do, what I was saying before about information, is I don't, I, I might cherry pick to an extent, but it is always based upon what the church says and how it resonates with Mark and Mother as the twin flames on our altar. So they're kind of like giant filters for the information, cosmic filters, galvanized cosmic, a galvanized cosmic system that helps us to see the word. Um, that's so. That's what I do when I get on and, and look at and look at information. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing right now. And I I heard from the brother.